Hello, everybody, and welcome to the channel. Good morning. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to show you a video today of Parlor CEO. So there's nothing left after um, this. So let's, you can all see this here. I'm going to bring this up here in a few minutes. Okay, I'm going to bring this up in a few minutes. Um, let me bring this up here. And we're going to show you there's nothing left after the Parlor CEO talks about why they were taken down. This is on Fox Business. And here we go. In text, a free speech crackdown. Amazon Web Services dropping Parlor from its cloud services late last night. Following Google and Apple banning the app from their app stores, this coordinated move from big tech and social media could effectively take Parler offline permanently and run the company out of business. Joining me right now is the CEO of Parler, John Mates, joining me on the telephone. John, thanks very much for calling in this morning. How are you doing this morning? Can you tell us what has taken place? Thank you, Maria. Um, well, it's, a, it's an interesting morning, I guess, to say the least. You know, I never thought we'd be living in a country, you know, where things like this would happen. Where you'd be a coordinated company canceling your, uh, your, uh, you know, what you're doing. I mean, essentially, the, the site is down. It's just a black hole. So, there we go. <laughs> uh, so it's pretty horrible. Uh, and, uh, you know, we woke up on Friday. Uh, we thought everything was normal. We were number one on the App Store. Uh, literally number one in the United States. Uh, for most downloads, ahead of TikTok, ahead of you know everybody, uh, ahead of Facebook, ahead of uh, you know Twitter, and uh, there's no indication we had any serious problems from Apple, Google, Amazon. There was no serious threats, no anything. You know, we had cordial correspondence with all of them, including weekly calls with Amazon, and uh, then all of a sudden, there's this massive threat, and we're going to get rid of you tomorrow. And now today, there's no site remaining. Woke up on Friday. Everything is fine. Now today, there is no, there's nothing left. That is really devastating, John. What are you going to do about this? How long would it take for you to uh, get on new servers? I mean, I know that this doesn't happen overnight. Amazon, you know, Amazon Cloud Services tried to take market share from the Oracle and Microsoft of the world, telling small business, come here, we're reliable. Uh, and, and here they are dropping you from their servers. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, like I said, Friday, we were a billion dollar, credibly a billion dollar company, um, number one on the app store. And now we can't even find anybody to host it. Uh, we've called all of the, you know, basically any of the big tech players. They all have said no. Um, and uh, it's really, really a challenge. All the backup vendors we already had, you know, deals with to, for hosting. Even ones that after the fact that they would host us all ended up dropping us the last second. Well, it's quite extraordinary to me that, uh, you know, Google and Apple still have TikTok on their app store when we know that uh, the, the intelligence community have told us that the Chinese Communist Party is using TikTok to gain information on Americans and taking their data. This is a Chinese company uh, and Americans are just giving them all their data and yet that's still fine to download on the Apple store. What are your remedies here, John? Can you, can you see your shareholders suing? I mean, is there a lawsuit? What are you gonna do? Well, I think there's certainly different avenues we can take to go down that route. But, um, you know, nobody has presented any credible piece of information or evidence that, you know, there's any problems on Parler that don't exist on other platforms. And so this really is a double standard. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really confused because we see all sorts of nasty, threatening content on, you know, Twitter, much more of it actually, in fact, in our opinion. And, uh, and, and actually a lot of content that's deleted from Parler still remains up on Twitter to this day in the form of screenshot. And so I don't understand, you know, you, you know what this is really about, because it's not about holding everybody to account equally. It's about giving preferential treatment to, you know, certain people and, and, and kind of taking it out on others. I totally see it that way. So you think this is all political. Uh, I mean, look, just yesterday I saw a tweet from the Ayatollah Khomeini from Iran threatening uh, harm and death to U.S. soldiers. That's still there on Twitter. 
Ayatollah Khomeini has a has a uh, an account on Twitter that continues even as they chant death to America. So uh, what you're saying rings true, given the fact that we continue to see horrible things on YouTube and we've been watching this for years. They have not policed themselves. If, if this can happen to you, it can happen to anybody. If social media decides to coordinate and cancel you out, kill your business. Yes, um, that is extremely fair. And, and, you know, in the case of a lot of the accounts that, let, you know, violence go viral on you know, these other platforms, uh, you know, it, it, it's actually very dangerous. We have not seen any, as far as we can, we can tell, there's no accounts that have tremendous following that are getting a lot of people looking at it, you know, talking tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands like you do on Twitter, uh, you know, making these kinds of threats, especially ones like the Ayatollah or, you know, uh, Khomeini that you mentioned that do on Twitter regularly. So it is a complete double standard. Um, and I'm not sure, uh, you know, I, I think people are waking up to it. And I think people see how big this is, but you know, it's really what we can do to help kind of curb this is point out the double standard as much as possible. Take screenshots of that content that's on Twitter and everywhere else and, and show the world that this is a double standard and share that and expose what's happening. Well, uh, not just Twitter, but uh, any uh, other client of web services that, that, that's using it for violent means. And, and all of these stocks are down this morning. Twitter shares right now are down eight and a half percent in the pre-market, John. You've got others down as well. As you continue to see this crackdown, I wonder if markets are looking at this and saying, this is going to come back <laughs> to bite them because it's actually showing us how dominant these companies are. Uh, by the way, uh, they're talking about purging lots of accounts just the other day. Literally, I think it was on Friday, or Thursday, I was at a million followers on Twitter. Um, I had one million followers on Twitter just a couple of days ago, and now I'm down to 922,000. So uh, just from my own you know, anecdotal research, looking at my own Twitter account, I don't know where all those accounts went from a, a million followers to now 922,000. John, let me ask you what the reason is. How are they getting away with this? I mean, they're saying that the targeted moderation uh, by these companies against your company came after the civil unrest, the, the disastrous uh, activity of violence, uh, which marred largely uh, peaceful protesters at the Capitol on Wednesday, interrupting those peaceful protesters you want to record it from uh, with here from now. obviously horrendous violence. That's what they're saying. Because that Did you see is not the activity working. on Parler that would have incited that? No, there's no there's no evidence that Parler has anything to do with inciting any of that. Uh, there's no mechanism to meet up or organize some kind of event like that on Parler, and so that's not really you know something that Parler could have been used for. Now I'm sure there were some people, just as there are on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else, um, you know, kind of up playing it or or making statements on it. If it was against our terms of service, we'd yeah, I'll do it this way from now on. I'm not interested in, in seeing our record platform only. or any other platform, frankly, well, used as a tool for violence and spreading violence. We were never about yeah, that. Well, we never advertised as being that. We advertised as something that's free speech, you know, in the United States, what's allowed by this country. We never, never promoted that kind of violence or anything like that. We would have never condoned it. You know, we have a lot of things in place to stop it. But Amazon and, 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 uh, and Apple and uh, Google they don't care. They're using this as an opportunity to squash the first real competitor in this space in so many years. You know, that's showing that we can contest the market. So then uh, when they realize the markets are contestable, they uh, squash the competition. So, you know, if there's a case for antitrust, I think this is a pretty prime example that the, that the first real tangible competitor squashed so quickly and so egregiously without any, you know, kind works. of, uh, they weren't holding back. Because they get a new computer. It, it, it obviously shows their dominance, John, if they can just totally wipe you out in a coordinated fashion, first taking you off the app stores, removing you from Google and Apple, and then Amazon coming in and pulling its servers, your law firm also walked. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have a complete list, but we have... Uh, probably 15, 20 plus vendors that all left uh, as a result of their statement. 
Um, and some people said that they would love to continue working with us. And then mysteriously, you know, something happens, somebody talks to them and they give us a call back and, and, uh, and they quit. Uh, they just pull their, their contracts out underneath us. And, and this is companies that are big companies that are on the stock market, you know, top 500 companies, everybody does it. It seems to be coordinated. That's right. And if it's not coordinated, it's certainly them banning us, giving them all a nod. You know, if they get rid of you, everybody will get rid of you. And that's how it works. And so this could happen to any company and anybody at any time. It's a very important story for us to watch. John, you were up to, what, 20 million users. You were the number one download on the App Store on the day that they removed you from the App Store. What do you want to tell users right now? How are you going to battle back? Well, everyone should, should hold on. Uh, and come back uh, when we can get online. It's a matter of time. We have to, at this point, we may even have to go as far as, you know, buying and building our own data centers and buying up our own servers uh, if we need to, to get back on the Internet, you know. But, uh, you know, there's still risk involved in that, given what vendors are, are doing and the extent they're going to get rid of us. So, you know, just hold on. We're going to figure this out. But it's uh, it's going to be devastating to our business, our model, and our potential to raise uh, future capital, at least with the plans that we had before. I mean, this is really, really devastating what they did. Well, if there's any example of dominance, this is it. And if there's any question about removing Section 230, uh, it's just been answered, given the fact that there is a serious power a problem uh, with five companies deciding the fate of so many others and being able to put one company out of business, uh, their competitor. John Mates, we'll be watching the situation. Thanks very much for speaking out, getting up early for us this morning. We will see you soon, John. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Okay, everybody. How do you all feel about that? Uh, leave your comments and questions at the bottom of the screen and click like or dislike and thank you very much have a great day take care bye bye boom